Hey guys, welcome back to some more AFK Arena. Today we're over on the pay to win account and we are looking at the five, that is right, the five most underrated or underutilized heroes in AFK Arena. So I, I'm hoping that out of this list, you're gonna get some of the heroes that a lot of players have kind of passed over because Lilith is coming out with heroes in such a very, very fast manner. There are a couple that have been kind of skipped over, but are very underutilized in my opinion. First one we look at is Kren. If you guys have seen Kren, he is an absolute monster when it comes to the Mauler Tower. Even if you look at all of the, the players that are using Kren, pretty much every formation within the tower is using Kren. He has also seen play into a lot of formations when it comes to the campaign. Looking at a signature item, plus 30 for him does really well. So when you look, after using three normal attacks, normal attacks are enhanced once. Enhanced normal attacks deal 40% more damage and stunning them for one second. That is really the big aspect is the crowd control aspect, stunning them for one second. After three normal attacks, the plus 10 takes this to two normal attacks. The plus 30 takes it to one. So every single one normal attack is going to stun the enemy, which is very, very strong. In addition with him, the utilization of his nine, nine of nine furniture, when the ability and shrouding bomb is used, any additional, an additional smoke bomb is thrown into the congested area. So when they use that, it is very strong because looking at the shrouding bomb, not only does the allies that are in here cannot be dealt critical strike damage, they also have their critical rating increased by 40 points, allowing them to do a lot more damage when that a shrouding bomb is in there which is very, very important to have, which makes him very strong. Again, very un underutilized, but even looking at the winning formations within the tower, all of them have Kren. They have him at a plus 30 signature item. They have him at nine of nine furniture. Next hero that we look at is Nomura. Nomura is a hero that really doesn't need um, her signature item really built. If you can look here, Healing effect is raised by 75% if a critical strike occurs, and then health recovery is increased by 90%, 120% of attack rating. She has very, very low attack rating. In addition, crit rating here is at 5, so it is super low for the crit rating, meaning that you're not really reliant on her being the healer and not really being that important with the healing role. <clears throat> The thing that really makes her unique is, of course, her 9 of 9 furniture. The first time an enemy gets close to Nomura, she activates the effects of her Beguile ability against all nearby enemies. That is right, guys. Anyone who is around her, she is going to use her Beguile ability, and she is going to crowd control them for 6 seconds, allowing the enemy team to essentially kill themselves, similar to what we see with Mihira, um, doing more damage against those heroes. A lot of players have utilized Nomura in the front line, meaning she is kind of a pseudo tank, having the enemies go right into Nomura, and then Nomura hitting them with that Beguile ability and the enemy team essentially killing themselves off very, very quickly, which is where she is strong. As you start getting into late game and end game, <clears throat> a lot of the focus is not on the tanks themselves, it's more on the crowd control aspect to get through AFK Arena. That is really where the heroes like Nomura shine. In addition, she is the support class, meaning she offers additional shields. She does have some healing. There is a lot more benefits, but the, but the Beguile ability is the primary one that people use Nomura for overall. Next one we look at, which is a hero that a lot of players kind of skipped over, is Oden. Oden does rely on the plus 30 signature item. Each time the ability Evil uh, or Eye of Evil reaches 200 fiend points. The attack rating is increased by 5%, guys, and haste is raised by 4 points. Attributes can be raised 15 times. So, doing the math, that is a significant increase, guys. 15 times that this can stack, raising attack by 5, haste by 4. That brings in the furniture aspect right here. While alive, Oden passively uses the ability Void Lightning every 8 seconds to attack the enemy with the current highest rating. As he gets stronger, he is doing more damage with the Void Lightning and he is casting faster. It's kind of his own super cycle because when it goes to the Void Lightning, they do recovers an additional 50 energy points for every enemy struck, meaning he is going to soul burn super fast as the battle progresses because he gets additional haste 
with the signature item, allowing him to do an insane amount of damage in a very short amount of time. In addition, with the Windbinder artifact, he starts with a big energy boost. So not only is he super strong with not only the displacement, but the energy reduction, he does a significant amount of damage as well, which is the reason he is underutilized. A lot of players that built him earlier um, never found any spot. He never had a, a position within the campaign or within a formation. Then he got a rework not too long ago. Once the rework happened, he became a very, very high priority to build, which is why he is underutilized by a lot of players. One that I personally think underutilized is Joker. Joker in the right formation is absolutely phenomenal because of his ability right here, the all out attack. So if you're putting him in formations that have heavy crowd control, we've seen him run with Gwen um, a couple times because she can actually do the stunning arrow. Again, strong formations with him for this all out attack can really, really strengthen the amount of damage that he does. We utilized him a lot when he was released. Now I feel like a lot of players have kind of forgotten about him. A lot of players have been running him with Raku and it works super well because of, again, the crowd control aspect that they bring in the formation of a couple different crowd control heroes, allowing Joker to maximize his damage with that ability, which again is kind of a reason why I see him being underutilized is he was good when he came out, kind of fell to the wayside. Um, don't see very many formations with him where he's utilized. A lot of people are even focused on Ezio or focused on Prince of Persia versus using the Joker, but he does work incredibly well in several formations. So the final one that we're going to look at, our fifth and final, which I absolutely love, is Lorzen. So Lorzen's a hero that is really overlooked just for the simple aspect. The only thing that players use him for is the linking of enemies. So used in the five pole, used in the thorn cheese, a couple different spots. But what a lot of players don't realize is building up Lorzen is actually pretty strong because he brings a considerable amount of haste to himself, but also in addition, his nine of nine furniture. And this is where he can really shine. The effects of the ability Wind Warden are applied to all heroes the first two times that it is used, which is further spammed by the haste that he picks up. But looking at the Wind Warden ability, cast a shield upon two random allies for seven seconds. With that nine of nine furniture, it is actually gonna cast it onto everybody, guys. It is going to utilize casting that ability onto everybody, which is very strong because not only does it add the value of the shield, 300% of the attack rating, but it also does add dodge, which is going to stay on there with his three piece. So when the shield generated by the ability Windward is broken, the affected ally shall continue to enjoy the increased dodge effect that are awarded when the shield was up, up until the ability's original duration, which again, you're getting a shield for the entire team with a bonus dodge effect, which is very powerful. Again, I think a lot of players really underutilize him because he is further down the scale. He also does possess the inner sight ability, which is good because stun a marked enemy for 1.5 seconds within four seconds of an allied hero using their ultimate ability. So when an ultimate ability is utilized, it is going to stun the hero, very short duration stun, but the ultimate abilities do more damage. This is kind of an amplifier that he brings to the, to the team to do more damage. I think the biggest downfall, similar to Oden looking at, you know, Pippa looking at Lorzen, is the utilization of being the mage class. The mage class does need a little bit of rework. Honestly, when they put dodge in there versus haste, makes a big difference considering haste is the, the single most largest skill in AFK Arena. The, the faster the haste, the faster the ults, the faster the abilities, everything is driven by haste overall. So guys, those are my five heroes, again, personally, that I think are very underutilized in AFK Arena. They do kind of have a, a, a niche or niche use, but ultimately they are very strong when they are built out. I know there's a couple other heroes and a lot of players say, what about the heroes that need reworked? Thane needs a rework, Kaz needs a rework, Brutus needs a rework. What essentially happens with those heroes is if they continue reworking the heroes, they might raise up in the, in, you know, the, the B class, the C class, 
right now, you know, falling in the E class is we cannot have every hero that is in, you know, the S class, the A class, the, the B class. We cannot have the entire AFK Arena team fall into those ranks. So even if they do a rework on a hero such as Kaz, they might rework her, moving her up in a little bit of the level essentially where she's at, but you are limited to the amount of heroes you can have in a formation. Even when it comes to five teams, you can only have a certain amount of heroes within that formation. So you'll see some of the stronger heroes right now or the heroes that are performing better that will actually drop down a little further into the formation. So guys, that is it for my, my five underutilized heroes. Let me know in the comments what you guys think, if there's any other utilized heroes that you think really should have made the list. And as always, thank you guys for watching.